Mark Morial, and I'm the president of the National Urban League, and it's uh, indeed a pleasure for me able to just share some thoughts about judicial diversity uh, with all of you who are assembled today. First, uh, we must embrace and affirm the idea that diversity on the bench is fundamental and important to the exercise of democracy and equal justice in this nation. And I applaud the efforts by so many of you to promote, to push, and to work for diversity on the bench in Georgia. Continue that fight. Continue to speak in positive terms about the value and the importance of judicial diversity. Because those that judge us uh, should remember the teachings and the words of the late Oliver Wendell Holmes, who said, the life of the law is not logic, but it is experience. And it is the experiences of life and varied experiences of life that a diverse judiciary brings to the administration of justice in this great nation. Second, I want to just take a minute and share with you some reflections on the journey I was proud to be a part of that began 25 years ago. And that was the journey that a number of young activist lawyers undertook beginning in 1985 and 1986 when we filed the historic case of Chisholm versus the United States and supported the companion case of Clark versus the United States, or rather versus Louisiana. Both of those cases were challenges to the judicial apportionment system in Louisiana, which had always had elected judges. Now, when I finished law school in 1983 and returned to my beloved hometown of New Orleans to begin practicing law, there were but four or five African-American judges in the judiciary in Louisiana. And there had never been an African-American judge who sat on the Louisiana State Supreme Court, which was elected, seven justices elected, interestingly, from six districts, with one district being represented by two judges, and that being the district that included New Orleans and included the suburbs of New Orleans and what, 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 what we considered to be a metropolitan district, but an at-large district. We challenged that district under the Voting Rights Act, under Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, because we believe that that multi-member or two-seat district diluted African-American vote, voters' influence and thereby, therefore, thereby present, prevented or made it far more difficult, almost impossible, for an African-American to be elected to the Louisiana State Supreme Court. After many, many years of litigation, we ended up in the United States Supreme Court in a historic case where the United States Supreme Court ruled that the Voting Rights Act covered judicial elections. That led to an aggressive set of discussions through which we finally settled that case and settled the case of uh, Clark versus Louisiana. Now, interestingly, by that time, I was a member of the Louisiana State Senate. And in the 1991 elections, where, when I was elected, the state also elected Attorney General Ayub and Governor Edwards, who in the course of their campaigns committed to us that they would work to settle these two cases should they be elected. They were true to their word. And we achieved a settlement which to this day means that we now have our second African-American justice on the Louisiana Supreme Court, that being Chief Justice Burnett Johnson. But secondly, that there are as many as 80 district appellate and city court judges throughout the state of Louisiana, meaning that Louisiana leads the nation in having the most diverse judiciary. One of the side effects of uh, our push for, in effect, racial diversity is that the court has also become more diverse in terms of gender. 
Uh, and therefore, Louisiana has one of the most diverse judiciaries anywhere in the country. And that is certainly, I think, a testament to the long, hard-fought battles we, uh, we waged that began 25 years ago, but also support from elected officials, uh, a United States Supreme Court, which then included Justice Thurgood Marshall, which ruled in our favor. Let me encourage each and every one of you to look at all remedies available to achieve a more diverse judiciary. Uh, we think it is important. We think, uh, and I believe, and the National Urban League believes, that it is part of our generation's responsibility to continue to work and fight for civil rights and equal justice in any way, shape, or form that we reasonably can uh, in this nation. Uh, I would say to each of you that the cynics and those who may tend to not get it, need to be faced up very squarely. I would encourage you to think about what we encountered when we filed this lawsuit in 1986, 85 and 86. We had uh, even established African American members of the bar at that time who thought that we, because we were all relatively young, all lawyers, under the age of 30. I was a plaintiff. There were others who participated as uh, counsel. Uh, we distinctly made a decision to include lawyers as plaintiffs in the case. We were helped by the late Julius Chambers and great lawyering from the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, but we faced opposition, even in our own community. I think it was more fear that somehow we wouldn't be successful and people's careers would be threatened. Uh, but we were not having any of that. And we waged on and waged uh, what at times seemed to be a lonely battle. Eventually, uh, the settlements took place. The late, great Justice Revius Ortiz became the first African-American justice on the Louisiana Supreme Court. And appellate and district court judges were elected throughout the nation as a result of the settlement in the Clark case. And even the named plaintiff in the Clark case, Janice Clark, is now a distinguished judge on the State District Court in Baton Rouge. I encourage you to continue to fight. Judicial diversity is important. That Voting Rights Act, which was passed in 1965, is an important tool. The Constitution is an important tool. But common sense, common sense is also unimportant to. The judiciary should reflect the values and the experiences of all Georgians and all Americans everywhere. That's the principle. Please continue to fight. Thank you. And I encourage your discussions.